Here. Hey, Marshall. All right, let's um, go ahead and get started. <clears throat> I've copied in the actions from um, last week. The first one, if you wanna go ahead and walk us through, Kershagor. Yeah, so I, I created two more requests uh, uh, about, uh, uh, I wanted to simplify the architecture evolution uh, workflow a bit. So that's uh, actually the second merge request. Um, it, it's fairly simple, it just, reduces the TLDR section to bare minimum. Uh, and I think that um, it might be a sufficient iteration. I, I know that you, Marshall, commented on, on uh, with the idea to actually completely rewrite the, the architecture workflow from scratch. But before we dive into that, uh, I think that either way, defining what a blueprint actually is and what does it mean in, in the, uh, like here at GitLab, what, um, what what are we using blueprints for? That's the first merge request, and I've already had a couple of discussions with other engineers, with Camille today, and, uh, and many different people about what a blueprint is for us. And we concluded that whenever I actually explain that to people, to engineers, um, I'm I'm trying to explain that a blueprint is actually a, a vision. Uh, usually a technical vision that makes it easier for us to align our iterations so that a blueprint is something that actually you can read before every iteration and it's like guardrails or like it, it makes it so much easier to um, figure out how the next iteration should look like so that's primarily tool to align our iterations and i wanted to frame that somehow in the blueprint in the in this merge request but I might not be actually doing a very good work with that. So Kami suggested that we should not use this uh, slogan, like a map of iterations, because a map indicates something that is very well described and uh, it's more like a proposal than, than a vision and that perhaps we should choose different words. Um, so I would like ask for help native English speakers here to actually choose a better word to describe what a blueprint might be. But the, the word blueprint itself probably uh, is also uh, introducing some confusion. So what do you think about that? Yeah, I, I think another take on it is that like, um, it's, you know, project planning and how we organize resources and like what what our, our overall iteration strategy is more of like a planning activity, right? And I understand that like, I, I think what you're trying to get at is, is that the blueprint should not only consist of the what, but how we get from the current state to the, the future state to some extent. And, and, and like, I, I agree with that in part that we should be trying to take this gigantic proposal and break it down into like things that steps that are a, a, a achievable, but I don't think it should be like the overarching focus of the blueprint. I think, I think the focus of the blueprint should, should be just like Camille said, defining like what we're trying to do. Um, but yeah, that's my take. Yeah. I think that uh, blueprint should not be a proposal. Basically, uh, how we have been using blueprints uh, is that in, in, in a blueprint, we do have a, a list of challenges, uh, a description of the opportunity um, and, and, and list of principles and heuristics that help us to shape our iterations so that as we iterate towards our goals, we do not deviate from the path and suddenly start iterating in a completely wrong direction. 
So that's for me, it's the, it's the most important part of the blueprint, except of, of course, sharing what we are working on, why we are doing that, where we want to go. Um, but it never actually contains a detailed technical proposal. It's more like a technical vision used to align alterations, uh, not a concrete proposal. And uh, I wanted to capture that in the Smurchy quest. I'm, um, I'm saying about this map of iterations thing because iteration on GitLab has very specific meaning. And we understand that differently than I think we want to understand that from the blueprint perspective. Um, I, I think the blueprint still needs to probably define a keystones or like key steps to, to better guide like how we want to execute that stuff. But I don't think that this is that we should be iteration. So um, and, and I, if you, if you're saying that it should not be a technical proposal with technical details, I I, I kind of disagree with that too. I'm because... I'm I, I'm not saying that this should not be a technical proposal. I, I'm saying that like it needs to describe a holistic vision with the points. Maybe there is some proposal described to navigate what we intend to see, like to show, because usually it's easier to show that through a proposal, or, or maybe like. Uh, how these things should look like, but I, I, I think like when I see like the iteration, I'm kind of anticipating that people when they're gonna be writing blueprint, they will try to cut that into iteration, iteration in terms of the milestone that are deliverables, uh, and, and this is I think the my main contention point. This is not the purpose of the blueprint. The blueprint describes uh, the vision, aligns us on the vision terminology help us define like the key um, aspects and like maybe the key milestones to deliver that vision but we should not emphasize of saying that this is um up yeah. to the let's say issue so so uh, may, so I, I think we agree with that it's a matter of the wording to convey this message <laughs> And I think that it's very important to highlight the difference between a proposal and a vision, because for some people, it might be the same thing. For me, in the context of the architecture practice, it's two different things. The, the proposal does not leave you a lot of room for choice. A vision is something that sets the, the, the direction, but you can still learn from the feedback after every iteration and <laughs> your choices based on like what you have learned from like the work that you have done so far right so but, that's, but that's... Per, perhaps a blueprint starts as like a, a a visionary statement but in order for it to become something that is workable i feel like it it has to be shaped into a proposal like i, I think that's the entire point of yeah but but it does not start from the start as we move forward we refine the blueprint and it becomes more and more concrete with every iteration at the end like this should be not really a proposal it should be a story of what you have done but this this like the amount of details in the blueprint or like how concrete proposal it is uh changes as you execute or something that's yeah similar. perhaps but i don't think we should op be opinionated about like how it it starts like if an engineer provides enough detail to consider the proposal i think that's still as much a blueprint as one that 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 doesn't right like i don't think we should be too opinionated about like what level of detail is necessary to consider it a blue you know it just seems kind of arbitrary uh, I but, think like, that's like if i if i have changes that i want to make to the ci yaml right i feel like the best way to have that conversation is for me to lay out what what the new syntax looks like right and i would consider that a, a proposal like having a a prose based statement of what i would like to accomplish with my changes to the syntax just seems like a less efficient form of communication so that's uh, something i i i um I think it's debatable because you can have a very concrete proposal for the next iteration, but how do you know it's all going to look like in like 10 iterations from now? You can learn so much from, from them that the, the proposal will completely be invalidated. And um, historically, I, I've, I've reviewed many blueprints and I had to ask authors to re, re, remove a lot of detail from 
uh, iterations that we could actually execute like in, in years from now, because we simply don't know how the proposal is going to look like uh, as we move forward with the iteration and we arrive to a point like one year in the future. Uh, those assumptions we are making right now might be completely invalid after a couple of iterations. Because in case of architecture practice here at GitHub and Blueprints, we are thinking about initiatives that span multiple iterations. I think if there's something that just requires a single iteration, you can just put that into an issue. There is no good reason to actually have a blueprint for it. I, I think we have good examples of both cases where having a proposal is like really counterproductive for the blueprint. And having a proposal is very useful for the blueprint. So maybe um, approaching that is simply saying that proposal is not a set stone design that you should implement. Proposal is more like a guiding how it may look like, but it's really expected that as we evolve based on technical limitations, we also constantly update blueprint and the proposal in it, if there is a proposal. That makes sense to me. Um, yeah, I, 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 would, I would probably not be very attached to, to the proposal, but I think we, we need to be clear that, I, I, I mean, like, uh, there is like this challenge that like a lot of people, when they see that this is the proposal, they think that this has to be implemented exactly as this. So maybe it's maybe clear on, on describing that the proposal in the blueprint is just a proof of concept that showcase a possible approach. Perhaps we should highlight the evolutionary nature of our blueprints uh, uh, to, to actually explain that we uh, everything that is in a blueprint is work in progress until something is done and that you can actually change the proposal and uh, uh, and then uh, rewrite something before the next iteration is you, if you feel that the direction should be adjusted. Not sure how, how to actually describe that in the merge request. So if you have any ideas, please leave, leave feedback. So uh, uh, yeah. I, I'm kind of thinking that the blueprint as it's merged is really like the snapshot of the current knowledge about the topic, what was done versus what may it look in the future. So as long as the blueprint is live, I think the expectation of the snapshot is like to keep updating the snapshot with the latest information that we have. So it would also indicate that if you propose a YAML syntax, but during development, this YAML syntax changes to something better, it would be really advised to update this YAML syntax in this proposal uh, to reflect the current state. Because I think the purpose of the blueprint is twofold, right? Like one, provide a long-term vision of like to align us on the common design, but the second, provide you a very quick access to the current development and how we are progressing. So for this to be relevant, because right now we have a lot of blueprints that basically they were created and they kind of in the freezer to be relevant, I think this is maybe the main expectation that the blueprint, as long as it's living, it should be constantly updated with the work we are doing. So yeah, and I, I, sort I, I, of, I, sorry, go ahead. So I was just going to say on that, like to me, what I kind of imagine is that we kind of start off with the blueprint, and then all these documents that we have for like security review documents and production readiness review we can kind of somehow bring those all in together and merge those in a way. And they, what starts off as a blueprint ends up as, as that with some defined things that, you know, covered across, across all of them. So, you know, we had the, the, the spreadsheets of all the different things that the different blueprints and, and proposals had. And we kind of come up with a, with a kind of single set of those things that that's like the absolute minimum that we have. And we might start off with something quite woolly and kind of a, a vision, but ultimately what we end up with is, is like a, a, a quite a well-defined, quite a well-structured document where we have common sections that are common across all of these. Uh, and and we, can we don't have to have one for production and one for security. Uh, that, that's kind of where I'm thinking, but I think it sounds like it's kind of different from what you're thinking, Zegos. I think that blueprint and architecture practice is a bit different thing for everyone, and we tr yeah. we're trying to actually 
um, um, devise a workflow that will solve many problems. Perhaps that's that's the wrong direction. I'm not sure, but um, I know why blueprints have been very useful for for myself, and I want to make them useful for other people here at GitLab as well. So that's uh, from where I'm coming, actually. Um, well, and I also think uh, another thing that we don't capture well today is the 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 firm decision not to go in a particular direction, right? Like I think that's just as valid. Like an skewed blueprint is just as valuable as as one that we do pursue, right? Because like it gives all the context as as to why we didn't go in a certain direction, right? Um, yeah, but but uh, I think that. Uh people, engineers are sometimes reluctant to start a blueprint because they don't really know what should be in there. So that's the reason why I started this merge request that is supposed to document what is expected from a blueprint, what a blueprint actually is. And I'm completely fine with changing this content, but I'm looking for some ideas about very like like short text, short description of what a blueprint is so that we could encourage people to contribute them uh, when they feel like they would benefit from having one. And um, yeah, I, like I think aside from like the, whether it's a, I guess how prominent the iteration strategy is in that blueprint is one thing. I otherwise agree with Camille that the overall content is good, but I think like, I, th I think the best representation of that is is the template that you populate, right? Um, like the most concrete definition of what a blueprint is ought to be just our template that you use to create blueprints. Um, so I'd like to like get us moving on 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 that as well. So because well, so like it, it, we can keep talking about like what a blueprint is in, in abstract terms right but and, and to be fair like it's on me to document like uh try to compile like what what we need in that document um but i think i think we'll have a much better description of what a blueprint is once we start to define that 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 template so what would your what would be your recommendation to just uh, close that merge request and open a new one with a link to a template or would it be still useful to have a very high level description of what, what a blueprint is here at GitLab? I, I, I think the high level description is is good, but I think like, um, I, I guess it sort of goes back to my feedback on the other MR, which is that like, I, I feel that like adding these new, like the description of what a, blueprint is and like the changes to the overall architecture evolution workflow it, it it it's still there still seems to be a bunch of documentation across these like three pages that isn't isn't helpful or in some cases almost like contradicts like our new definition of what a blueprint is and if we go back to like the exit criteria for this working group like the first bullet is that we wanted to firm up the definition of architecture or come up with like a better term, right? And the past conversations led me to believe that we were trying to standardize on blueprints as the term, right? Because I think like this whole conversation is still convoluted by the fact that like people who haven't been participating in this working group don't know what like the architecture evolution workflow is today. And having the term architecture in there at all like leads people it, it, it sets an expectation for what it is that i don't think is aligned with what we're trying to make it be and, and so that was like why i was saying like maybe it makes more sense to to sort of have like a, a clean house approach where we start to frame everything in terms of, of, of blueprints and we start to define what the process around blueprints looks like. Why do you, why do you think that uh, starting building the workflow from scratch will uh, 
result in better outcome than just iterating on the existing one because i feel like i'm not entirely certain if the problem here is the term architecture or the term of blueprint like what what the real problem is and i feel that uh, actually uh, if we start rewriting the workflow from scratch we can end up with something that is exactly the same thing or perhaps we will be in even worse place so uh, i wonder if the better way forward would be to actually simplify this as sim as as significantly as we can and then just make iterate iterative improvements for this by into for like by by looking at how people are using the workflow because i feel like if we try to rewrite that completely from scratch i'm i'm, I'm not sure if we can actually can come up with something better like it would very diff be very difficult to guarantee that we would have something better. So I would rather iterate on existing docs uh, than rewrite them because we might be wrong on the or uh, uh, wrong on the assumptions of what what is wrong with the current workflow. Sorry, I'm not sure if I'm explaining that well. Yeah, I guess the it was the workflow tldr section that was updated right i'm just looking at the rendered thing yeah in, in that second merge request i only updated that the tldr section and uh, have not made any changes to everything else but perhaps in the same merge request i can actually simplify other parts of that workflow as well And uh, right now, we are trying to work on the next version of the architecture uh, practice. We defined some problems that we believe we have with the current architecture practice. But I think that the only problem that is evident is that the adoption is not very good, right? And perhaps uh, by simplifying the workflow and having higher adoption, we could encourage other people to actually... I feel like I watched um, one of these recordings like a few months ago, and the first problem that I remember being identified, and, you, and Eric particularly was opinionated about this, was like the, the problems you identified were people are using this workflow, but we're getting blueprints, but nobody's executing on them. And some people feel like they're not able to get their, their, their work executed. And Eric suggested, okay, well, then it needs to be integrated with the product prioritization changes that are happening now. And that was the direction you were going in a month ago. And then a, a spreadsheet came out that showed how we didn't use this uh, blueprint process for some things that were executed. And then this meeting started tangentially looking at why people aren't using the process. So I think it, you, you might be better serve picking one of those two problems, right? What, why does it matter if people are getting results but not using the process? Maybe solve that problem second. What about the people that are using the process and not getting results? try to try to fix that problem first. Um, but right now you're you're focused on people that are getting results but not using the process. What 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 can we do to make them use the process more? Maybe you could flip that. And, and that's what it seemed like you were doing a couple of months ago. Yeah, that's a very important reminder. Uh, thank you, Dylan. And I think that here we might be actually confusing the root cause with a symptom. Perhaps the adoption is not good because blueprints don't work for some people, right? And um So my, my, my thinking on that had evolved a bit in the sense that like I think I think it with a simplified blueprint process, we could get to a point where even if product has already like laid things out on the roadmap for engineering to do, when 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 an engineer is picking up that work, the the first action for any any large initiative is to produce a, a blueprint right because i like i feel like while it while it, the ideal state would be that product and engineering are are collaborating at the very beginning of the process and and both product and engineering are producing blueprints that get stitched together into a cohesive roadmap the the reality is that product doesn't really leverage this process at all that's unlikely to change in the short term but the best that we can do 
is, is to have all of engineering consistently producing blueprints when it is why? appropriate to do so. Why, because why, why is that the objective, not results, right? Because that is exactly the opposite of the way I framed it before. It's people that are using blueprints saying that they're not able to get results, but now you're suggesting it's more important that everybody use blueprints than figure out whether how to make blueprints get better results. That's so, just what I'm hearing, and it's kind of a negative framing of it, I, I recognize, but I, I'm focused on like process versus results, and, and, and I, and I want to kind of understand how we're focusing on results ultimately. So I, I, I think that like a, a symptom of our, our current processes are that like large initiatives get worked on in individual teams and there's an opportunity cost associated with those being implemented in, in uh, like a siloed way as opposed to being broadly communicated across the engineering organization and providing that opportunity for teams to converge on solutions, particularly around um, larger initiatives. So like- At a large company, I feel like this is this is like a really hard trade-off and, and I'm kind of skeptical of the last thing you said in that like if I'm seeing teams make progress on things despite getting, you know, buy-in from the entire company, I, I just, I got to go, well, that's that's good. They, they, they're, they're making progress because I, I can see too often the alternative of getting buy-in from the entire company or getting, you know, convergence on architecture or solutions at companies this size of GitLab is just so hard and it, and it so often just kind of cripples progress that when I see teams that like make decisions on like hard technical things without consulting, you know, the entire company, but they still make a good decision and it has trade-offs, I think yeah, that's good enough. Like we're making progress, but it's not always the case, but it, but it, it feels like there has to be some of that for us to keep moving and not be crippled. Um, yeah, I think it's, it's interesting to, to uh, highlight that the architecture evolution workflow here is to get to help us get results. And uh, I, I recently uh, thought about actually um, how how well the architecture arch architectural practice here that might work uh, in relation to this ma managing as everyone can contribute uh, framework that actually it makes it so much easier for us to make rapid decisions and, and stuff like that. And anyways, I feel like it's, it's difficult to move forward here and I wonder if we should uh, focus more on iterative improvements that we know are probably good like simplifying the workflow as much as we can is probably good because having a simple process is definitely better than having a very complex process if we can expect same results so uh, what do you think we should do to simplify the workflow uh, or how, how to get those merge requests I, I started merged? Do you think that we should do that? Is Would it be a good iteration on the workflow itself? I, I, I have no like strong objection to merging the two open MRs as is. Um, or, 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 or nearly so. But um, yeah, I, I, I hope that like, if we continue to iterate on what's there currently, that we end up with like something I can read in a couple of minutes rather than, you know, like a half hour, right? And, and also like, I, I think there's a, still a bunch of stuff in there that's not going to map cleanly to like, our proposed definition of um, of a blueprint that rolls in AppSec and PRR reviews, um, but yeah, we can we can address that as we start to flesh it out, I suppose. So it's, it's just difficult to reason about everything that's there currently, plus the additions, and, and so that was my motivation for saying like, hey, maybe we just define a new page blueprints, and 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 start to lay out what that is. Um, but I think we can get to the same point. Either way, my, my point is that we had spent a lot of time to write this page and the content there is because of uh, some reasons. We had numerous discussions about what should be in there. And um, 
you know, starting from scratch is kind of removing the, the wheels from those past conversations we have with Gary, Eric and other people. Uh, and that might not be necessarily wrong, but there, there's, there are no guarantees that we actually will come up with something better uh, if we start from scratch. So that's the reason why I'm biased towards more like iterating on the content we have right now than starting something over from scratch. But I, I might be wrong here and I'm open to like alter, alternative point of view. Can I make an observation? Uh, can you hear me okay? Yeah. So uh, as I told you, I, I want to sort of step back from this. You know, it's not, I don't know if it, there's that much I can help, but one of the, the original reason I joined this is out of the architecture, you know, large architecture discussions that were happening. And I think looking at the root causes of many problems we have, including trying to decide what what is the process going to be, <clears throat> it comes down to the state of the monolith, the fact that it's uh, there's no good domain boundaries and it's uh, a big ball of mud in many ways. And that, like, when I look at the maintainership, the reluctance, the slowness, the way this discussion goes, it's because things are so coupled and it's a large, daunting, dangerous, risky task to try to change things. And like I compare that to some of the stuff that the editor team is doing, for example, because it's like a lot of greenfield work, like in the content editor, in the remote development work. Some of the stuff I'm doing in the markdown, which is like off the little side of the app, we're, we're not doing blueprints. Uh, we're not doing other stuff like that, but we're working very effectively and agilely with a lot of feedback and uh, taking the right direction, coming out, I think, with good design that get in front of a lot of people, but with a minimum of process. And I think, why is that? Well, it's, it's because it's greenfield, because it's an isolated, low-risk greenfield area. And you can't do that in every area, but if the overall monolith were more well-structured with more cohesive and loosely couple parts, we might be able to do that a lot more often. That's just an and how do we get there? It's a chicken and egg thing. Yeah, we have to do some big architecture things to get there, which we have to have a process for. So there we are again. Yeah, I mean, I like I completely agree with all that in principle. I don't know, like, I I, I think it's like orthogonal. I mean, it's related to what we're trying to do well, here the because it improves we're going the currently are like, How do we allocate? some of this bucket of slice of maintenance work to do these big changes. And that's, mm -hmm. there was some earlier discussions when Eric brought that up and how this has fit into the prioritization. And I feel like we sort of pivoted away from that and started, you know, talking about, you know, what does the architecture process look like, so. Sure, yeah, I, I, to, to me, like, it kind of goes back to what I was saying before. Like, I don't think, I don't think the goals of this working group have really changed. I just think that like the order of what we're trying to accomplish has been adjusted so that we can prioritize coming up with a more efficient workflow and, and then incorporate that workflow into like the planning and, and, and resource allocation um, process. But I, I yeah, certainly like I don't if we don't, if we don't get to the ladder, then like everything is it's pointless, right? So yeah, rest assured that we, we have to keep the end goal in mind. Okay. And, and and also like just one last clarifying point like the original reason to roll like the the um specification for what the proposal is as well as like the requirements for pr and appsec review into one document was so was to provide folks like motivation for producing that document in the first place right because like there, there's just no incentive right now to produce a blueprint, regardless of whether it's an eff effective communication tool or not today. I don't think that is a super effective communication tool. I think it's a great communication tool. I don't think it's as effective as it should be because like the proposals aren't evangelized throughout the engineering organization. And just culturally, we don't value folks chiming in on blueprints or producing blueprints as part of their like day-to-day -day activities, right? Um, but like, 
if, if we have an efficient process that allows you to get work done more quickly, folks are going to be more likely to use that process. Or if we just have a process that's mandated, right? And like, this is the process you have to go through to get your solution shipped to production, right? It's much easier to get all the other things going once, once that's the case. Um, and that's why I, th I think that focusing on streamlining the workflow first is the most important thing, the most important first step that we can take. Because we just we we frankly just have to sense. get to a point where this process or some process like it is is the process everybody uses as they're as they're building functionality. Whether that's a large scale architectural change, whether that's a a, a a large feature or what have you, right? If it's not if it's not the default path that everybody takes, then we're 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 going to be back to where we started, just with a new new names or slightly tweaked process. But like, can we ever even like think that we can introduce a process that suddenly everyone is going to use, like suddenly, without doing that in small iterations? I, I think. Yeah, because nobody uses the current process, though. Like that. That's why I don't really care about like totally overhauling it, right? Because like when I go tell somebody that they ought to produce a blueprint for something, like, and then and then like the first step is like find an architecture evolution coach. It's like that doesn't make sense as a as a first step. Or like this person is already like a principal engineer. So like, what does that what does that mean to them, right? when what we really want them to do is just produce good documentation for like what their plans are, right? That is the number one thing. And that's why I think we should strip out all the like barriers, all the Google Docs stuff, all the architecture evolution coach. Because if we can just get people producing blueprints, that will- Evolution coach was there because of a reason. And I this reason is that if Chad creates a blueprint or like any other senior engineer or perhaps intermediate engineer without an architecture evolution coach, no one's ever even going to look at uh, that blueprint with an organization with thousands of engineers. The architecture evolution coach is there to amplify the importance of that blueprint, to use their contacts, to talk with directors and VPs about the content in there if they believe that it's important. If we remove that content, we will end up with something that we had problem like a couple of years ago that we could create the best issue ever, the most important one, and no one would ever look at that until actually there's a rapid action about it. Yeah, that, and that's, that is fair. And I think more important in the context where like you're coming to the table with, with some novel problem that you're solving that's not already roadmapped. But like the reality today is that like we're going to be producing a lot of blueprints for things that are already planned, right? Like the CI components is a great example. That's already on, uh, in some form, that's already on products roadmap, right? So it's not about like um, getting the work prioritized. It's about defining what the work is and making sure that it makes sense in like a in, in, in a broader capacity. Yeah, the uh, uh, architecture evolution workflow had been written to make it possible to incorporate like to like for engineers to have influence over what is our roadmap without no, yeah. them, only like pms that decide what we are working on and if we are reactive to that and create blueprints only for what like is on our product direction page then we are missing an opportunity of solving the the most impactful technical challenges and I'm completely with you on that. I'm just saying, like, I think I think the pragmatic approach is to get b before we get ahead of the problem. We, I, I think it makes sense to like focus on 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 the immediate need, which is like better documentation and better communication around like things that we are already planning to do. Because if that becomes a well-worn process like producing a blueprint before something is planned becomes a lot easier and a lot more likely 
to be something that that people get bought into okay. or, or, or even we can just have product producing the blueprints as the first step you know what i mean i would like us to uh, uh, to pause for a moment and think about what can we do to avoid walking in circles without any getting any reasonable results from this working group because this is actually what i believe is happening right now and i'm uh, you know a bit uncomfortable with the uh, possibility of not getting any results out of those discussions and uh, I, I feel like that's the reason why i'm pushing for concrete action points after every meeting to actually move forward in some way because we've had many meetings many discussions about that and we still don't know how to move forward so what do you think we should actually do to get some results out of those discussions um i think i think we should have a a I think we should try to define the template for a blueprint. And then I think we should see like, whether our current workflow maps to that template or needs to be changed to accommodate that. Let me see. I, I think that makes sense as, as the next step, at least. Okay, so where, where is the template and how you can share that with the uh, working group members? Because I, I know that you have your personal project with 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 some amount of- Yeah, I can share that. And, and I don't think that it's necessarily the template, but like it's a, it's a starting point at least. But, but, but I, I think, know, yeah. Uh, I can add a link to a template from that uh, merge request of mine that describes what uh, blueprint is. I guess that the the content in this merge request uh, will need to be simplified, anyways. It's it's probably too abstract, and I I can remove at least a one one paragraph from it. So I, I pasted I, a link to the to the template, but I I think we should like refine this and just go ahead and make it the 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 template that you're supposed to start with for all new blueprints going forward um so so we we talked about making the workflow simple yet there's like 20 subsections in that template no i know and that that's why like it needs to be refined but it also like like the part where like the documentation and if you look at like the the actual underlying like raw text of this template it includes a bunch of descriptions for like what you're supposed to do for each section but it goes back to what we were saying before where like the 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 first commit on your new blueprint is not a fully populated blueprint right it's it's a it, it, it's a proposal or whatever you want to call it that we're then going to refine into a blueprint that's actually workable, right? So I could just fill out the summary section of this and that would be a perfectly fine mergeable blueprint in my opinion. But but I think it it ought to be like mostly fully fleshed out before we consider it workable. So why do we need a template uh, instead of linking to uh, uh, an examples like to, to other blueprints that already exist? Well, in the long term, it's much more difficult to like build tooling around that, right? Like if you create a new MR, like you should get your template copied over for you and all that so that you can just get started writing. Um, but I think it like encourages people to produce blueprints in the same structure so that like I, I, I don't have to read. Like there's mental overhead in parsing the blueprint, right? If they're in the same structure every time, then like I can kind of jump around and know know what I'm looking at okay, but also so like there's 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 stuff that like assuming that we care about like rolling in the PRR and, and AppSec reviews there's requirements there that have to be met and there's sections of it that have to be signed off by different people right okay so would you be able to write a, like the most simple temp template uh, until the next meeting so we could actually decide about the next uh, iteration for the workflow itself. Yeah, I'll work on that. And part of it is just that I need to take inventory of, of what the requirements are for AppSec and PRR reviews. Okay, let's do that. I think we should wrap up, so yeah.
Thanks. Okay, thank you. See you next time. Bye-bye.